So, watch me. Good chunk of the Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris, Vancouver debate. And wow, if it isn't a hundred times better than the Matt Dillahunty, Jordan Peterson debate. Um, you know, Jordan Peterson shows up this time in full Jordan Peterson mode. And he's a lot more relaxed and he's a lot more on point. And even if you're a critic of Jordan Peterson, you know, you got to give it to him. When he is firing on all five cylinders, he can really be off the charts brilliant. Rapid insight after rapid insight after rapid insight, and they all seem to be on point. Um, Sam Harris is like that too, at times. Uh, ironically, though, Sam Harris seems more hemmed in by a rigid ideology, <laughs> believe it or not. I mean, not always, but there is something in Sam Harris that is always trying to bring it back to religion sucks. Period. Wait, but religion sucks. And he tries to route the conversation back to that underlying absolute truth. He's kind of dogmatic about it a little bit. Not as much as some other people, but it's definitely there. So, when Jordan Peterson is trying to make, uh, stake his claim that religion is, a, is an enormously useful, beneficial thing to society at large... Now, here's the thing that seems to be happening in his psyche, and it seemed to have started a while back. It's stirring up inside of him, as one would say. He has a deep-seated intuition that religion in general, Christianity in particular, has been profoundly useful for society as a whole. And it's occurring to him that it couldn't possibly be as useful as he has convinced himself it has been for the past 2,000 years or so if there wasn't some underlying metaphysical transcendent reality to it. That seems to be why he's almost a believer, even though he doesn't quite believe in God or Christianity, especially not the way it's presented. Not in any sort of, you know, Jesus died on the cross for your sins, rose from the dead, that type of thing. He's a kind of Christian because he sees in these stories, as he called them, these narratives, deep-seated uh, metaphorical truths. Now, if you're an atheist and you're listening to this, there's a certain part of his, of his presentation that should be non-controversial. And whether you believe in God or not, the idea that the Bible is filled with stories that have been important in building the society that we now currently live in because they have pointed to metaphorical truths, that should be absolutely non-controversial. That is almost not debatable. If you disagree with that, it's kind of because you've been so tripped up by, you know, your own atheist talking points. Go, oh, well, wait, you know, God commands a genocide. Yeah, one part, one small part. God, God, you know, commands to kill the Midianites. Yeah, one small part. That's not the whole of the thing. These are small little things that you've taken out of the whole, not necessarily out of context, because, you, you know, Noah is just th maybe three pages in Genesis. It's not even a big, huge part of Genesis. So you're not taking it out of context, but you're taking it out of a 2,000, a 1,500-page book. And that 1,500-page book has been informing and inspiring people for 2,000 years. So there are, there are important truths buried therein that it seems almost non-negotiable. But, you know... People disagree with that, or try to. But what Jordan Peterson is saying is that there, is, there are narratives in the Bible that have been absolutely essential, that he, it would, he would say, in constructing the society that we live in today. And he doesn't want to throw religion away because he's afraid you're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And, and Sam Harris, to his credit, agrees with him a little, only insofar as he can. But then he starts going back into, you know... Um, basically, religion is evil. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> religion is evil. What are you talking about? It's terrible. It makes everybody superstitious idiots, and we base their lives on falsehoods.
So anyways, the part of Jordan Peterson's presentation, the part of his, his, his belief system that I find should be non-controversial is that there are stories in our religious traditions that contain deep metaphorical truths. Those metaphorical truths has helped us to live our life and build our society and who knows which ones of them are essential and if we get rid of them we are throwing there is a real danger that we are throwing the baby out with the bathwater and we are throwing away something really 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 valuable and important dare i say sacred if i say sacred that implies you know the, that the religion the underlying metaphysical transcendent is true he's saying it doesn't necessarily have to be to be really, really important and really valuable and to have informed and, and guided us. I don't see his point as all that controversial. And I'm not sure that Sam Harris would necessarily argue with that either. Sam Harris seems to have more, be more troubled by the toxic as aspects, aspects of religion as it's practiced. And I, you know, if you want to get tripped out about the toxic aspects of religion, I don't necessarily have a quarrel with you that those are to be avoided, downplayed. One of the, one of the, or weeded out altogether. So, that's the debate as it stands thus far. Um, there's a lot to it, and I'm going to make a bunch of videos about it, but... Just at first glance, first listen, you know, it's much, 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 much more productive, better debate than the than Jordan Peterson versus Matt Delahunty. Hundred times better. He's much more of himself. He's bringing a lot more to the table, and he's much more cogent and less defensive. And he's not trying to prove that Sam Harris is actually a Christian, buried, you know, buried underneath his atheism. So. That's the first listen thus far. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a, a bunch of videos on it. I I assume so. We'll see. Anyways, that's all for now. Amen.